Hi guys, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, today we are going to talk about fractions, adding, subtracting, reducing, all that good stuff. You are going to see fractions from now until forever in all of your math classes. And it's one thing that we do actually use in real world situations. Uh, so I want you to have a really good handle on fractions, okay? Uh, for those of you in my algebra class, we're following along this book, Saxon Algebra. We're looking at the third edition. This is actually lesson one, lesson one. Um, I'll be pulling problems from there, so if you want to follow along in the book, uh, that might be helpful. All right, so let's get started. First things first, let's do a quick review here. We are going to do, uh, let's start with this, 7 over 10 plus 3 over 10. Right? When we're adding fractions, we need what we call a common denominator. Common denominator, we've got one here, right? 10 over 10. We add straight across the top. We use our common denominator on the bottom, right? Uh, and that reduces down to 1. That was a good warm-up, right? Okay, so let me switch this. Get my big face out of the way. Okay, so the next one that we're going to talk about. So when we have a common denominator, life is easy, fractions are fun, it's good. When we do not have a common denominator, we have to find one. So a good example of that. We have 1 over 3 plus 2 over 5. This is where it's really helpful to know your least common multiples, okay? Least common multiples for 3, we have, just think of it like counting by 3s, right? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, so on and so forth, right? For our fives, we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I keep going on, but I don't need to because what we're looking for when we're finding our least common denominator is that we are looking for the smallest thing that they have, in, the, the smallest um least common multiple that they have in common and taking a look now I'm going to tell you most of the time you, you can multiply these two things that will give you a common denominator it may not always be the least common denominator okay so it's worth making sure that you get a you get the lowest one otherwise you're just gonna have to reduce your fraction I'll be honest I'm lazy I don't like reducing fractions so I want to start as as small as I can right make life easier Okay, so we listed out all of our factors of three and factors of five, and immediately we see that we've got one right here. Whoop, there we go, 15, okay, 15. So what we need to do here is we need to change these guys into something that has the same denominator. Now, I wanna back up here for just a moment and talk a little bit about this. If you have, and there's two things I wanna talk about here. If you have three over three, just like what, with our first problem that we started with, right? We know that that equals one, right? 17 over 17 equals one. Anything that we can, uh, anything that's on the top and the bottom, it equals one, right? With that same thing, let's talk about this. Three times one equals three, right? We're going back to some real basic math here. 17 times one equals 17. We are allowed to multiply anything by one. That is called the identity property. Identity property. Why is that important? Because that's what we're gonna be doing with our fractions up here. Okay, we're gonna be multiplying it by one. Only our one, it's, if, we, if I went back over here and I said, oh, just multiply by one, that doesn't really help us. So we're gonna do a different version of one, okay? What that's gonna be is, we found our common denominator is 15, which means I'm going to multiply this by three because that'll give us 15 but it has to be something that equals one. So if I do it on the bottom, I'm gonna to have to do it on the top. It might make more sense to do this. So three over three equals one, and I'm allowed to multiply anything by one. So that's why I'm able to do that, okay? On this side, we wanna multiply by five over five. Five over five. Now that I've done my work here, my side work here, I'm gonna erase that. Okay, so taking a look at this, we have five times one gives us five. 5 times 3 gives us 15, plus 2 times 3, which gives us 6, and 15. All right, so now we have that common denominator, right? So at this point, what we can do is we just bring that denominator over, 15, and then we do 5 plus 6, which gives us 11, and that is your answer. That is your answer. All right, 
So uh, as we go along in uh, these videos, what I want you to do is to make sure that you're uh, writing down the, the examples that I'm showing you. And also every once in a while I'm gonna have you pause the video and uh, do a practice problem, okay? And so here's, here's one such practice problem. Let's do two over three minus one over eight. And at this point, what I want you to do is go ahead and pause the video and see if you can't work this out. When you're done, come on back to us. Okay, so uh, again, we wanna list out all of our factors of three and all of our factors of eight. Now, what we can do, and, and we don't have to list them out every time, but what we can do, we know we can multiply by those two things, right? So we know that if I multiply this by three, uh, I would get 24. Actually, let me back up here. So I'd get 24, right? That's gonna be our least common multiple in this situation because eight, we have eight, we have 16, then we have 24, right? 16, three doesn't go into 16, so that's what, what's gonna make it the smallest one. Really know your multiplication here, folks. It might even help if you have a 20 by 20 multiplication table. Okay, so again, we're allowed to multiply anything by one, but we want that one to be written a little bit differently. We're gonna do three over three because that gives us one. On this side, we do eight over eight. Good, what we're gonna do is multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom, end up with 16 over 24, minus one times three, three over 24. Now, you guys are in algebra. This is gonna take me, uh, uh, this is also another, uh, I'll have another video about uh, integers here. Actually, let's just pause. Well, I was gonna say we should add the opposite, but we'll talk about that in another video. For right now, what we've got is that 24, right there, 24. Then we have 16 minus three, gives us 13. Excellent, if you got 13 out of 20, or 13 out of 24, that is the correct answer. 13 is a prime number, we can't reduce this at all, so uh, that's your answer, okay? Good work. Good, okay, so our next problems that we have are uh, mixed numbers, mixed numbers. So a mixed number has a whole number with a fraction attached to it. And just as a friendly reminder, let's do this. Uh, seven and three fourths, this is a mixed number. Mixed number, okay? Uh, in order to turn this into, so let's write that down, mixed number. In order to turn this into an improper fraction, what we need to do is, we know that the denominator is gonna stay the same, so we can just, straight away, let's just write that down. Now what we have to do is four times seven, which gives us 28, then we, have, then we add three, so 28, 29, 30, 31. This is, the, this is seven and three fourths as an improper fraction. This skill is important to have when you're adding and subtracting fractions, because uh, if you have mixed numbers, it's gonna be a lot easier. Uh, but there are two different methods of doing this. So we're gonna start by doing the improper fraction first, the improper fraction method. Then we'll talk about some borrowing and some other fun stuff there. Okay, uh, let's see. Why don't we do 13 and three fifths plus two and one eighth. All right, 13 and three fifths plus two and one eighth. So we wanna go ahead and turn that into an improper fraction, that first one, right? So we've got 13, we multiply that by five, good. We add three to it and we end up with 68 and that denominator stays the same, five. Plus, and then we do eight times two is 16, plus one is 17, we have 17 over eight, good. Now we are ready to find our common denominator, okay? Now we're ready to find that. So uh, this is gonna be a little bit tricky. Let's see. Uh, Actually, no, we're, we're, I don't know, it's, it's early, I have no idea. Uh, this one shouldn't be tricky, but again, uh, to find that common denominator, we're gonna multiply five times eight. Like I said in the beginning, uh, most of the time you can just multiply the two denominators together, but sometimes it doesn't give you the least common one. In this case, it does. So we want to multiply it by something equaling one, so we're gonna multiply this by five over five. This side, we are going to multiply it by eight over eight. Okay, eight over eight. So now what I've got, 68 times eight. That gives me 544 over 40. Plus 
85, that's 17 times five gives us 85, over 40. Now we're gonna add those two top ones, right? So 544 plus 85 gives us 629. So now we have this crazy, I'm so sorry you guys, didn't realize that that was out of the frame. Uh, so now we have this crazy uh, improper fraction, right? Where the top, the denominator is larger than the bottom. We have to turn this into a mixed number. So what we're looking for is how many times does 40 go into 629? So if I take 629 and divide it by 40, I end up with 15.725. Let's just keep that 15 for now. 15, good. We're gonna keep that denominator, 40. And, uh, and so since I don't have the decimal, right, we're gonna do 40 times 15, which gives us 600. 600 plus 29 will give us 629. So 40 times 15 gives us 600 plus 29 gives us that 629. Uh, good. That's that's kind of complicated though, right? Because you got like, these large numbers, and you, if you don't have a calculator, calculator, it can be a big pain. So I'm going to show you a different way to do this. Okay, a different way to do this. Instead, what I'm going to do is we're going to write it a little bit differently. I'm going to write it like this. All right. So we still have to come up with that common denominator. All right. So we're going to do five, five, th three, uh, eight. Helps if I write the right numbers. Eight and eight. So now what I have is 13 and oh, over 40, uh, 24, two, 40 and five. Hopefully you guys are all with me so far. We have some common denominators here, right? Common denominators. So looking at this guy, let's deal with just that fraction portion first. 24 plus five gives me 29. Good. Now the uh, 13 plus 2, 15. Bam. A lot faster, right? A lot faster. So there's some other things that we're going to need to learn uh, with that when we, because uh, sometimes we'll get an improper fraction over here and then we got to deal with that with our, our uh, whole number. Okay. So let's practice some more of those doing it this method. All right. Okay. So let me I think my camera's falling here, guys. I'm sorry. I'll give you a little more space. Okay, so good. All right, so what we're gonna do now is practice doing some mixed numbers that way, mixed numbers. So let's take a look at, actually, let's do the same problem, but this time it's gonna be subtraction, right? And this time it'll be subtraction. So we have 13 and 3 fifths minus two and one eighth. Again, we're gonna have to find oh, all like that, right? Now we're gonna have to find that common denominator again. So we're gonna multiply this by five, five, five over five, multiply this by eight over eight. And what we end up with is 13 and 24 over 40 minus two and five over 40. Good, all right, we're subtracting this time, right? So we want to do 24 minus 5 is going to give us 19 over 40. 13 minus 2 gives us 11. Bam, you guys are done. Done, done, done. Excellent work. Uh, so now what I want you guys to do is practice doing one of those on your own, on your own. So let's take a peek at, let's do, actually, yep, let's do this. I want you to practice two and one half plus three and one fifth. Go ahead and pause the video and give that a shot. Good. Okay. So now that you're back, let's multiply five times two for our uh, common denominator. So multiply this by two over two. Because if I do it on the bottom, have to do it on the top. Multiply this by five over five. What I end up with is... 2, 5 over 10, plus 3, and 2 over 10. Good. Let's look at our fraction part here. We have 5 over 10 plus 2 over 10. That gives us 7 over 10. 7 over 10. Uh, 2 plus 3 gives us 5, and that is our answer.
Good, I hope you got five and seven tenths. Excellent, okay. There's one more part of this that we are going to need to do, which is use, and I'll make another video for that. It's subtraction with borrowing, because there's an extra step in there, okay? Subtraction with borrowing. But in the meantime, this is adding and subtracting fractions and mixed numbers uh, when you have to find the common denominators. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks so much.